Hello, Thad. Sorry to hear about the dial-up. And thank you for the recommendation. I'll give you some eventually, just not this week. But before I get to anything else in this video, and this might just be related to my Marxist tendencies, I want to talk about a topic I feel could use a little bit more discussion this week. Labor. You know, because Labor Day was this week. For a fair bit of people, probably the only thing they know about Labor Day is it's the last day that it's socially acceptable to wear white. Let's refer to them as awful human beings. However, a comment on Facebook contextualized how little relation labor has to modern America. The commenter wondered why we didn't always have three-day weekends, as it would seemingly make the world happier. My first reaction was, I got this one. You know, because of my Marxist ways. My second was, no, I'm not doing that on Facebook. But here we go. First, America has an incredibly weak labor movement that Republican legislatures are constantly trying to weaken. Those same legislatures are trying to undo many of the gains of the labor movement. 23 states currently have right-to-work laws. Most employment is considered at will, which gives little protection to the workers. Also, the Protestant work ethic, bootstrap mentality, and an unhealthy worship of GDP and productivity. All these things combine to compel us to work against our own best interests. Simply put, America worships the almighty god of hard work. But to what end? To be successful? But then how do we measure success? I would certainly argue that it shouldn't be measured in how many of these you own but instead by how much of this you do. But by far, the biggest reason for a weak labor movement is a lack of education. People don't know why a strong labor movement is important to their lives. At most, they've heard of the Triangle Shirtwaist Factory and heard a brief but barely objective account of the Haymarket Riot. In fact, very little attention is paid to the labor movement of the 19th century, despite the major impact it has on our lives today. Most of the labor protections we enjoy today were not just the result of strikes and protests, but were won by the blood of laborers often spilt by the very government that was supposed to be representing them. Case in point, Labor Day was established in 1894 in response to the death of workers during the Pullman strike. By death, I mean, they were killed as a result of U.S. military intervention. Turning protests violent by use of government force has a long and storied history. As Howard Zinn notes in his chapter, The Other Civil War, Union troops were used to break strikes. Federal soldiers were sent to Cold Springs, New York to end a strike at the gunworks where workers wanted a wage increase. Striking machinists and tailors in St. Louis were forced back to work by the Army. In Tennessee, a Union general arrested and sent out of state 200 striking mechanics. When engineers on the Reading Railroad struck, troops broke that strike, as they did with miners in Tioga County, Pennsylvania. And that was while these troops were supposed to be fighting the Civil War. You can see this history in action today in the force used against the Occupy movement. You know, this guy. While the use of force against the Occupy movement is atrocious by today's standards, in comparison, the level of violence practiced against the labor movement in the early 20th century and before would rank as a crime against humanity by comparison. I would like as an example to recount one specific incident, the Ludlow Massacre. In September of 1913, miners in Colorado went on strike. In response, the mining companies who own the houses evicted the miners along with their families. Thus, the miners erected tent colonies. I would say they kept calm, but as was typical, the mining companies hired armed thugs to attack and harass the tent colonies in order to break the strike. The thugs used Gatling guns and rifles forcing the miners to take up arms in their own defense. Eventually, the Colorado governor called out the National Guard, not to defend the miners from assault, but to assist the thugs in breaking the strike. In April of 1914, with the strike still continuing, one of the larger tent colonies was attacked with machine gun fire from guardsmen and armed agents. The National Guard would later move in and light the entire tent colony on fire. The result? 19 people dead, mostly children, who died not from gunfire but from their tent being lit ablaze. In the aftermath of the massacre, a brief conflagration took place in the form of guerrilla war between both sides, known as the Colorado Coalfield War. The conflict became one of the most violent labor incidents in U.S. history and ended only when President Woodrow Wilson sent in federal troops to disarm both sides. After all that, the strikers themselves achieved very little, but the public outcry and necessity would help to ensure better working conditions for laborers and led to the formation of the Commission on Industrial Relations, whose report would help push the eight-hour workday and ban child labor. In short, the history of labor is a violent and bloody affair. It deserves far more reflection and way more respect than a day off to go shopping. And certainly, it should be way more than a one-day lecture stuck between Reconstruction and World War I. With all that said, time for video from the reading. So I didn't get everything because my camera only records 30 minutes, but I did get most of Tim, I think all of Derek, and quite a bit of Casey, and some bits and pieces of Tony. I'm not really sure how well it worked out. So here's the deal. There's far too much video for me to just tack it in here. So what I'm going to do is cut in a few short clips, probably some funny bits. On my first day, the first thing I sell is a battery-operated vibrating vagina for $248.37. <laughs> Next up is Derek Houser. He has a beard. He believes in the efficiency of language. And then what I'll do is put the rest of the videos up on the channel and then link to them. So, you know, Tim... Let me point well here. Tim, this will be where Tim is. Then we'll go over here. We'll say Derek will be about right here. That's where we'll put the Derek link. And then over here we'll have some Casey. And then if there's anything else, we'll just put some like miscellaneous right in 
right in this area. So, miscellaneous down here. I will see you in the future.